Ready. I'm taking this journey with us. Analog studio. Uh, <laughs> Hey Chris, first of all, thank you so much for having us. You know, analog, but really the real to real is our passion at Real to Real Haven. Welcome to the Real to Real Haven Studios here in Brooklyn, New York. I am your host, Ryan O'Connor, and this is Straight to Tape. Tonight, alongside of my amazing sound engineer, Mr. Paul Millar, we're going to expose you to what has largely been lost over the last 30 to 40 years. Like Marco said, with the rise of the digital laziness, as I call it, the world has been duped into believing that they don't have to feel sound, but sound is multi-sensory. It's alive, and it's only these pieces of analog equipment that can help us reach that feeling. So here in our studios, we provide a very intimate setting. We're sure all of you and our fans tuning in can interact with the artists and get to know them, but most importantly, they get exposed to why tape is quite simply the best format, period. Without any further delay, I'd like to introduce you to my very good friend, Aaron Burnett, and his band, The Big Machine. Thank you guys so much for coming. All right, guys, do me a favor. Introduce yourselves and tell us where you're from. I'm actually from the Chicago area, from Northwest Indiana, Gary, Hammond, that, that area, and I have family in South South Chicago, so there you go. My name is Taylor Leach, I'm from Plano, Texas. Uh, my name is Nick Jaws, and I'm from Chicago area as well. I'm the child of musicians, and I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you so much. Very good, thank you so much, Nick. All right, so Aaron, Let's open this up a little bit. I don't know how long ago it was. It must have been three, four years ago, maybe a little bit more. I remember running around Flatbush Avenue with you at Prospect Leverage Gardens, Zombie House, El Patron, back of the Westbury, smoking a thousand cigarettes, plotting. I think this was right before you went on tour with Esperanza Spalding. It was after. It was after. Okay. So that was maybe more than two or three years ago, maybe more than four years ago. But you now have your second Grammy under the old belt. You're touring all over the place. You have a new passion for house music. Give the audience here a little taste of what it's been like over the past couple of years for you and winning these Grammys and touring. I don't know. The past two years were kind of tough. I would say they were pretty tough. Um, it, it wasn't the, the, the most ideal time to win a Grammy certificate, I can tell you that. You know, you're just like, oh, I got a Grammy certificate. Oh, I can't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, great. I guess they'll find out on the internet, right? You know, but no, Esperanza is one of the most talented people I know. She's a really good friend of mine, and I really appreciate her having me play her music, you know? So that took me a lot of places. And, you know, she asked me to do the album. I did the last album. It was like a, um, it was like a, a eight day recording. It was, it was live and people could come there. So we had a live audience. We're talking about some pressure, right? So we spoke before this, obviously, right? And we're going to basically do a journey through jazz leading up to your new jazz because people have been quoting you as pushing the boundaries of said jazz. Oh. So talk to us a little bit about the lineup you've shown me um, and talk to about the artists you're going to play to lead up to your music. Uh, Duke Ellington is a big influence on me. Like when I was in, I was actually when I was in Berkeley, I wrote this like extensive term paper on Duke Ellington. I just learned so much about Duke Ellington, like how he composed, like all the people that worked with him, like uh, Paul Gonzalez and all these different people, and like all their different sounds and like how it worked out and like, you know, it's it's very interesting, especially the stuff with Mingus and all that stuff, you know. So uh, I started with that because I wanted to kind of. I really like that song. And then uh, Bud Powell for like, you know, I was, I, I was going to do Charlie Park, but I was like, yeah, I'll just do Bud Powell, you know, it's, yeah, because it's that era, you know, the, the bebop era. And then we're going to move into um, Monk, which is more playful. Like, I, I like Monk's stuff. I really like Monk's compositions. And, and then we'll do John Coltrane, which is one of my biggest influences. And the second set is going to start with Andrew Hill. We, you know, it's still kind of from that same era. It's still the 60s era, like the late 60s. Yeah, and then, um, then we're going to go for And then we're just going to jump to my composition. Obviously, we are sick for tape. The show is called Straight to Tape. All we care about is analog. 
What has your experience been in the recording side of things? Have you done vinyl? Have you done digital, tape? I mean, we were talking before was this, uh, this all started, and you, you seem pretty familiar with tape, and you know, one of our goals here is to make everyone familiar with tape. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm particularly familiar with it, but I've had a few um, things that were mastered on tape. Okay. Um, but yeah, most of the time, I mean, you know, doing vinyl is a little bit inaccessible financially, you know, um, it's a sad reality, but you know. Well, we have, a, we have a studio here now, so, you know, please feel free to come get recorded on now tape anytime. Well, we are tonight. That's right. And we're bringing it. All right, guys, I'm, I'm sure you're bringing it. I've known this guy. We, we, we're sure you're bringing it. But listen, we're going to get this show started. Again, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Marco. Love you. And uh, let's get these chairs out of the way so you guys can rock out. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
One, two, one, two, one, two.
<laughs> Taylor. Taylor. Taylor Leach on the drums, by the way. OK, this next song is about, um, so we got 10 minutes. oh, 10 minutes. Oh. Okay. So we're going to OK, so we're going to play, ooh, we might have to play a little melody then. You want to just play the melody and just play the melody and then go into what, juxtaposition? Uh, sure. OK, I guess we're going to do. One minute when it's the one that's one minute. Give us a one minute warning. Okay. <laughs> that would be more than that would be more than ten minutes, trust me. Uh, okay, um, yeah, so we're gonna do so this is a ballad I wrote. We're just gonna play the, the melody so you can kinda hear how just, I elaborate and embellish. But this melody is called post humanistic illusion. And if you know anything about post humanism. This was a CD you gave me years ago, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this one is, uh, yeah, this is a ballad, but it's also about the state of like the world and how people can come together and realize that some things are illusionary and some things are real and some things are illusionary. And like that, um, almost that uh, juxtaposition, which is funny, we're playing juxtaposition after. But um, yeah, that, that, that relationship and how that like can translate to sound. Uh, wow, is that, am I explaining this okay? Yeah, oh, sure. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. The only thing you didn't explain well is the reason why you put it on. <laughs> oh. What happened there? What happened okay. There? That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago, okay? We didn't know. We didn't, we didn't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Ready, guys? Uh, one. Two. One. And this, how many minutes we got? Five. Okay, this is juxtaposition. We're going to try to play this in five minutes. Hey, finale. Here we go. Okay, ready? All right, what lips don't fail me now. Um, what is it? What year did you write this song? Oh, this song, I wrote this song in my last year in Berkeley College of Music. And this is my, um, this song kind of um, represents my, uh, almost like, the juxtaposition of me being in New York and Boston at the same time. And then I made a choice, and I just decided to come to New York because Boston 
Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn. 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 No. All right. All right. Um, That's right. Okay. All right. Ready? Um,
guys, listen, thank you so much for coming to the Real to Real Haven Studios in Brooklyn, New York. Today was our first episode of Straight to Tate with Aaron Burnett and his band, The Big Machine. Please join us on November 5th, where we have Ryan Lee Crosby, blues guitarist, Batonian blues out of Mississippi. He's coming right here for another episode of Straight to Tape. Thank you very much.